Here we go. All right. So, when we last gathered, last few days ago, because that's how time works, right? Um, the party finished up their final preparations. They double checked everything. Drava might have stocked up on too many materials and supplies and whatnot. And they had a brief chat with Cora as he did a a check in just to see where the party was mentally, how they were holding up, and to remind them that uh, shit's gonna get a lot more stressful in the coming days or whatnot and all that. But once that was over, the morning after, they said their goodbyes for now as they left Solace Village and with our opening scene the party has they've been flying for about a half a day and it's well into the afternoon at this point and in order to conserve energy they are landing and going to walk on foot for a little while and with that, place your tokens on the map, and we go. All right, uh, where's the audio? Why is a bitch not coming? Yo. Do you need me to put your token on the map for you? My shit's being fucky for a bit. Hold on. Chunk. Chunk. There we go. All right, tight. So, once you all touch base on the ground, at Drava, she stumbles a little bit as she is very much so not used to flying, and certainly not for half a day. But she fixes her hair as it got a little <laughs> screwed up by the wind. And taking a look of your surroundings, you see a body of water. You see two caravans. The uh, people inside them don't seem too talkative. But you do greet them as you walk by. And to your right, you see some trees with what you think is edible fruit, as it appears to be a tad on the spiny side. I could just peel off the skin. What then? Hmm. Drava, she almost skips her way over to the fruit, as you can tell she's excited to be on the ground again. And uh, she picks one off and takes a good look at it, making sure not to accidentally poke herself with the spines that are coming out of it. After some careful examination of said fruit, she can't remember the name of it, but as long as you pick off all the spines, because that's what, that's what the poison resides, and gives, give it a very thorough washing, uh, it will be safe to eat. Hmm. Do I have a water in my backpack that I can open up? Uh, you, and like you wash have, the stuff seeds. You have a lot of water with you, but there's also a body of water 
from where you're standing behind you. So you don't have to use any of your supplies oh, to clean yeah, the food if sense. you don't want to. Shall I use nature or medicine so I can wash this stuff or I just wash it? Mm, you can just grab some and wash it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna walk to Drivo and I go like, Hey, good job on spotting the berries. Do you mind getting some for me so I can wash them for the rest of the gang? Ah, oh, sure. Uh, there's about three good ones here. But I can... Uh cut them up and make them last a bit longer just want to get the poison out of them first when i was with my <laughs> she's she's speaking as she's taking them off the tree when i was with my first group we would eat these quite often though it was after uh our Spellcaster decided to bite into them without thinking, and well, she got sick for about three days. Oh dear. Yeah, we always told her to think before she did anything, but she was more on the gung-ho side of everything, because, well, I thought she was raised, and she didn't know what restraint really was. Yeah. Anyway. What? I've, I've gotten these picked off, so let me show you how to wash them. What were you going to say? I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, I was just, um... Just observing. Here, let wow. me come While you two are interacting with each other, Yashua is scanning the entire area. Hmm. Okay. As... Do you want me to roll for that, Riku? No, 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 you don't have to. Uh, as you scan the area, you don't see anything too out of the ordinary. You see a couple of Broken branches, some fallen leaves. Uh, you see a toppled over cart. One of the crates have hit the ground in a manner that caused the top to go flying off. And you see some packaged and untouched food, food materials. You see some potatoes. You see some carrots. You also see a crate that has not been opened. And behind that crate, you see, you see a couple of ice, <clears throat> see a couple of uh, unrefined ice shards on the ground. And when you see them, you instantly assume that those ice shards were to preserve the food and keep them from spoiling due to the heat. If you if you want, you can collect the materials of which there are about six potatoes, seven carrots. You don't know what's in the unopened crate, and you spot about ten ice shards on the ground. Do I pick those up, or...? Yeah, if you want to, you can take it. Alright. Alright. So... I'm gonna show break over. You... You are collecting what was on the ground, yes? Yes, I'm collecting... The what is that? Potatoes, carrots, and ice shards? Yeah, some unrefined ice shards, so... Unrefined ice shards, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, do I have... Here, let's put a U at the side. <clears throat> uh, as 
Yashua is collecting what he found, Drava instructs Mel on how to cut off the poisonous spines from the fruit they found. And she says that in order to get it all off in one fell swoop, you start from the top and then you work your way down in an S-like shape and then come back around to the top as if you're drawing a figure eight on it. Thank you very much. Once you do that, yeah. you very slowly peel off the skin. You take it to a body of water, and then you very thoroughly scrub it for about 30 seconds. Afterwards, you give it a shake, and if no green liquid comes out, the poison is all gone, and it is safe to eat. Fuck yeah. And after <clears throat> after you do that, you now are in possession of three Evergold fruits. How do I spell that? I put it in, in the oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was about to say I'm like Riku. <laughs> Oh, Evergold. Got it. Mm -hmm. Once you deposit those into your bags, uh, you take a look at the time via your tombstone phone, and you can see it's about about 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, you aren't hmm. You aren't necessarily hungry or thirsty, but a small bite or a small drink of whatever will do you a bit of good. Do my what? Do you some good. So like, mm, okay. like taking a snack or yeah. a sip of water. How long do we need to get to the location? Uh, it'll be a while. Because mm. Angela did say that it's a few days walking speed, but since you all can fly, uh, she did not have an accurate estimate of how long it'll take you to get there. But oh. since you all have been flying for, like I said earlier, about half a day, uh, you are missing half your MP. You know, she was taking a little chomp out of some jerky, and Drava, she eats half of one of her Evergolds and puts the other half back, oh, puts the other half back in her bag. Hmm. So, Mel, I know you said you didn't really know much about where you came from or ever really get out much but have you been to any other cities where you came from hmm not quite it's a very um uh, it was a very hard situation for me when I was younger, so I never really knew anything until like a while after I grew up, I, I guess. Also, Riku, does Kugane like exist in, in the world that I was in? Does Kugane exist? Yeah. And like the world that I used to live in. Because I did grow up with my father there before like we got yeeted. Uh, not so much Kugane one to one, but think of think of a fusion of Doma and Kugane, but without you know the Garleans doing what they did. Mm. 
So if I were to say like I lived in that location, what would that location be called? That location would be called Wisteria. Okay. So I'm gonna tell. Uh, I'm gonna like retract what I said, then go back to saying that I was from Wisteria. Okay. Um. Yes, actually, I used to live in a small eastern location called Wisteria with my father and my sibling. It was really fun there, though. Like very nice countryside. Um, cherry blossoms were everywhere. I actually learned how to be a blacksmith over there as well because my father used to be one of the most famous blacksmiths in that town it was quite therapeutic living there actually oh. kind of miss it hmm. i it sounds like a great place i used to know a blacksmith but she she didn't really want to do the whole blacksmithing thing she Wanted to go be her own gal, but her family was quite imposing. She did manage mm. to get away from it and finally go live her life, though. That's good for her. Yeah, I haven't spoken to her in quite some time, regrettably, because, well, I don't need to go over how much of the social stuff I don't do. Um, I do remember what she looks like, though. She always wore That's a good. blue shirt, orange hair with a part going to the left. It went a little bit past her ears. She had brown hair and, I mean, brown eyes. And she always had a flower bracelet on her left arm. Hmm. That's interesting. As you and Mel and Dreva continue talking about where you came from, Yashua looks upon the water looking for fish and anything else he could use. And amidst that scan, he finds one sword tail fish, one yellow tail, and a gray bag looking like a, like a small knapsack washes onto your foot. In it, you find an envelope that somehow isn't soaking wet. You find three coins one red one blue and one white and a small pouch containing 900 gil <laughs> the envelope it has a a wax seal on it but you've never seen it before it looks like it looks like a lamp sitting atop of a chalice that is sitting on top of a mountain you don't really know what to do with it so you stick it in your inventory and save it for later Apologize. I'm sorry, I apologize. Too many distractions. Are you fine? All right. Sorry, it's just I had to put away some tools and got some pizza and some potato wedges. Nice. Do you need me to repeat what I just said, or are you good? That's all right. We're good to come. All right. So after taking this small rest, about. 30 or so minutes have gone by and Dreva borderline bounces up to her feet and she gets to step it. Hmm. It's almost as if 
she is enjoying this far more than what she's willing to let on. <laughs> Interesting. She needed this. <laughs> she looks back to the party and she says, Y'all, come on. Yeah. It's yeah. sun's going down. We got progress to make. Let's go. Alright, alright. Wait, hey, Anything for you, Beyonce? Who? Wait. How do you know who Beyonce is? You know who Beyonce is? You're from. You're, uh, you forget that you're oh, from. Oh, ha, fuck. Oh, she's from so Um. Oh my god. You're funny. You <laughs> thought I said Beyonce. I said. Just pretend she didn't say that. No, no, no. Ro roll deception to see if you can actually pull this lie off. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Fuck. Okay, this is horrifying. Deception is right, right up deception. under athletics. Yep. <laughs> oh. Girl, you thought I said Beyonce. I said anything for you, Queen. God. Why is Beyonce some type of queen on Earth? Maybe. Did she tell us that she's from Earth? Yes. No. Well, I don't remember. I don't remember. Her ever. You, 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 out of character, inferred that she is from Earth, but in character, you don't know that. Oh, okay. She believes you. For now. <laughs> <laughs> huh, that's whatever. Let's let's move past that. <laughs> Formation. Yeah, just laughs out both of you. Okay, ladies, now let's get in formation. As you all are continuing along your way, just having a nice chat and wondering and guessing about what the next area you're gonna be staying after a while is like and suddenly Dravos stops walking and she puts her hand on the ground it glows for a second and she finds a thread that is normally undetectable and very shortly after doing that, she looks straight up and to the left, and she tells the both of you to get down. Oh. As a flurry of arrows fly right by your heads. And suddenly... There are enemies around you. Oh dear. Ambush? Out of the woodwork, or rather, <clears throat> out of the trees <laughs> from your right, you see several enemies uh, come at you, and two of which are lunging straight for Yashua. This is an ambush, and thus all of you begin combat with minus one action. Alright. Who has the like, highest speed? No. I think I think that would be Drava. Let me see. 130. What do I have? One seventy-eight. Uh, Oprah, what's your speed? Um, uh, one thirty-one. Oh my God! All right, I'll go first. <laughs> so, this guy. Yeah. 
who comes charging at me, right? Yep. Yep. Can I point my thrusters completely at his face and take off and burn him? You want to take flight but use it as an attack? As a counter, because he's charging at me. Sure. Hmm. What do I have to roll for that, good sir? Since you're burning it in the face, uh, hmm. Do hmm. You don't know the fire spell, right? No, I don't. Okay. Do one d eight plus uh half of your magic attack, so that'd be 54. Flash R, 1D, 8. Space, 1, uh, 54? Yeah. Or 154, you said. Wait, hold on. 54. 154, okay. Like this? Uh, you gotta do uh plus fifty four. Oh, wow! I have to put the plus symbol. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. So I am generated and oh my god. You do that as a as a as a counterattack, and this enemy is currently suffering from uh burning. Okay. So this is what I wanna do. Since I took up in the air, I have less Mana consumption because of the armor upgrade that everyone got. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to use the, the anti gravity ring to reduce the weight of the uh, armor so I can save more mana while I'm in the air. Can I do that? Well, the armor itself isn't that heavy, nor does it, nor does its weight have anything to do with uh, NP consumption. <laughs> I'm over here being logical. Okay. <laughs> All right, but, if you say so. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. In that case, uh, how much mana am I burning per action per turn? Uh, since the mana cost is now half, and you are currently in the air, um, you spent twenty-five to take flight. And because you're remaining in okay, so you have you've currently spent 35 NP. Okay. But how much am I spending per turn though? Uh Per turn after this, as long as you stay in the air, you will be spending 10 MP. Okay. One question, did we recover our MP after we took off again, or no? You mean like before you left? Yeah. Uh, yeah, before y'all left, you had, uh, full HP MP. Okay, so I was at 861, and then we flew... Yeah, you flew for about half a day, so knock that down by half. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, give me a second, I'm just redoing... My health is at a little bit, so... Okay. Let's see if that's a day... Damn fucking sorry, it's just I'm not used to this PC yet. Yeah, that's fine, thank you. Yeah. Alright, 
Alright. So I spend 35 for taking off. Three ninety five. All right. I got the high ground. Yes, sir. Uh, the higher I fly, the more mana I burn. No. Okay, cool. I'm. I'm twelve meters in the air. How high? 12 meters. Damn, okay. Well, yeah, because I didn't just fly up. I did a fucking turbo thrust so I could set the dude on fire. Right. A lot of, a lot of propulsion energy, dude. Okay, so I flew back. I'm in the air. I'm going to target you because you're a cunt for coming at me. <laughs> All right, this thing just took five hundred and 65 points of damage. Oops. That all the actions? He's meeting me again. You good over there? Yeah, sorry. Uh... I, I did one action in my three shots. Those are my four actions, and I aim by defending. Alright. Uh, Mel, it is your turn. Hoi hoi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Fuck you, bitch. You die first. Wait, no. I have an idea. No, I need to use Dragon Slice to get my shit up. Um, I can use it. I can use dragon slice five times, right? Yep. Okay, okay, so I'll use it five times. No, you have four actions. You got ammo. I will use remember. it four times. Okay. Whop, 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 whop. Wait, fuck! I keep forgetting. Take the first one. Then I need to increase my attack by ten. <laughs> there we go. Then there. Mm. Okay. Dragon slice again. Oh. Yeah, great. Oh, nice. This one again. Okay, that's it, right? Right. Okay. I keep forgetting that I can't roll it four times because it increases my attack by time. Uh, you are attacking this one, right? I'm the one in front of me, yeah. All right, well, it died. Lovely. Oh, my kill. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I went on that trouble to set up on fire, too. That's my kill now. Right. Wait, can I, can, I, can I take the fire away from his body and use it on my sword? No. <laughs> Why? I don't know how that works. It could. No. I mean, you can be burning flesh onto your sword if you want to do that. No, I'm kidding, don't do that, that's gross. <laughs> anyway, uh, it is now Drava's turn. Can I play for Drava? What? 
No. Can I Why? I'm not letting you to run two characters. Yeah, it's not fair for me. I want to run two characters. I'm kidding. How about you do two? I do two. Never. No. I'm never running two characters. Anyway. Uh, Jay, I my was, Jay was gonna set her sights on the two archers that are in the trees. And she's going to kick things off with a little bit of fire and a little bit of blizzard. So that's a little bit of salt and some spice. <laughs> okay. Because uh, her two spells act as AoEs, both of these archers are dead. And with her last two actions, she is going to give both Yashua and Mel some MP. So let's see how much you guys get. Okay, now 22% of 2750 is. Okay, both of you get 605 MP. Your mic peaks, oh but I'm assuming you said sweet. Yeah. Okay. I'm just surprised. That much MP? Right, no. You essentially just tapped me out. <gasps> Excuse me. Now, for the enemies, uh, the one with the shield is going to use the cover ability on the other orc berserker. So, for... Let's see here. Okay, so for five turns, uh, any damage... <clears throat> Any damage done to the Orc Berserker will instead be dealt to the Kobold Guard. I assume this is the Berserker and this is the Guard. Yes. Alright. Alright. And then... <clears throat> for its next action... It is going to... It's going to launch its shield at... Let's do it this way. Alright, it's throwing its shield at Mel. Bitch, bitch. It needs to roll to hit you. It missed. Fuck you. Let's do this again. Alright, it's throwing at Mel again. Bitch. It missed again. Oh, I, was thinking, I was kind of hoping for it to throw the shield Can on I laugh at him? I'm laughing at him. My character laughs at him. Okay. Fuck you, bitch. Uh, you just throw like a bunch of insults from our world at him. He's, he's trying to get him. For its, for its fourth action, it is going to cast Radiant Barrier on... I sure if it casts on me. No, 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 no. It's casting it on this little spear wielding fuckwit. So, half of. Okay. Uh. Gonna do. That. Like, can I do this instead? And then I'll do this. Okay, yeah, that works. Alright. So this little bastard has a barrier around it. Action 4, and then for action 5, it is going to use Fighter Heart and raise the attack power of 
all of its allies within 15 feet by 15 points. Alright, and then for the one with the staff, that one is going to cast fire on Mel. It needs to roll to hit. Oh. Oh. Alright. So it's hmm. hitting a crit on Mel. That's... Wait, no, hold on. Wait, hold on. It's okay. He casted it, didn't it? Yeah. Fuck, I can't use slap shot. Ha, <laughs> fuck you. I don't know what that means, but it's a crit. I mean, it's a... Uh... Well, that, that's it's a damage roll, but because it's a crit, it's times 1.5, so that's 174. Now, let's see. Mel. Oh. So, Mel's natural defense completely negates the attack. Bro, imagine sucking. <laughs> Couldn't be me. You just flex. Gracefully. <laughs> no, Mel just... She... Uh, not, That's doing the man Mel, dance. Drava, she takes the attack head on and blinks like nothing just happened to her. <laughs> uh, in frustration, the goblin is going to uh, cram its pitiful looking staff into the ground and it is going to cast arrow barrage on Mel. I mean not fuck on Drava again. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to say. I, I keep I keep getting my female kit players mixed up. Excuse me. Anyway, chance to hit uh, huh? <laughs> Alright, well that's another crit shit. Uh, mm. You sure this comment is not a player character? It's not. <laughs> Riku's hacking. And that times... Alright. Uh, this, because the crit comes out to... 236 and again Drava's natural defense completely negates the attack and this time the goblin gets so frustrated that nothing is happening to her that it it throws its staff at Drava to which she catches it snaps it in half and now this goblin has literally zero attack And Comedy. because it watched its weapon get broken, uh, it is an incredibly intimidating. Mm. Yeah. Bitch. This <laughs> goblin right here <laughs> is going to sprint over to Mel and attempt to strike her with its jagged club. <laughs> And it, it missed so spectacularly that it fell on its face, and thus its turn is over. These are so, so pathetic. <laughs> Yashua is just looking down from where he is and just... just says pathetic. I try to hold back a laugh. Uh, the... Cobalt with the spear is going to it's going to run over to Dra Drava in a zigzag like motion in an attempt to throw her off and when it appears next to her it goes for a lunging stab It missed. However, 
because of how it missed, Jaiva now knows that this enemy's weapon is covered in poison. And as a word of caution, she advises you all not to get stabbed by this, because it looks like some pretty nasty poison to it. And in embarrassment of missing its attack, it tries to move back to its ori original position, but it trips over its goblin ally and falls on its ass. Oh my god. Damn. Yeah, these things aren't very bright. <laughs> However, the orc berserker, on the other hand, it smashes its club into the ground to create a small earthquake. And because Mel and Draper are on the ground, and this is an AoE, they will be receiving damage. Okay. Because this is an AoE, uh, subtract your speed stat from that 240, and that is the damage you will be taking. And so Draper is taking 110 of damage. Did you do your HP, Mel? Mm -hmm. Where's the? Yeah, you gotta reflect that on your sh on your uh, icon, too. I can do that. Yeah. So click. You see the little the bars above yourself, right? Yes. Click yourself, click the green circle, and then replace the number with where your current HP is. For the so damage not, that you um, took. It's not letting me. Stop giving yourself status ailments. <laughs> <clears throat> Can you see my health bar? I see the health bar. I don't know how to edit it though. So I'm clicking on it and it's like, fuck you. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Riku, did I display my health bar? Uh, yeah, you should be able to edit yours now. I forgot to toggle that for you. The blue button is jumping, all right? Yes. <laughs> In that case, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna change my health bar. Okay, the red bar is gonna be for shields, then. Alright. One action for the Orc Berserker. And then its second action, it is going to jump behind Mel and try to hit her. From behind. However, it's got a roll to hit. Alright, it's hitting you. Wait, it's a melee attack. <laughs> Pain. Okay, so you. One on your slap shot. <coughs> mm, fuck, excuse me. Okay, so you're taking half damage from that 207. 207 divided by 2 is 104. Because 103 wound it up. Mm hmm. <laughs> and then. It is going to 
look at Drava, and it's gonna try to grab her. And it grabs her. So Drava is currently being grappled by the enemy. However, it does not have any uh, free hands anymore. So Drava is currently trying to escape the grip of the Orc Berserker. And this turn, she does not break free. And then for its for its third action, uh, it is going to very loudly yell in Drava's face in an attempt to intimidate the hell out of her. So that's that. She shrugs off the yell as she has an expression on her face that says she's heard worse before. I mean, knowing her history, I'm sure. And then for its for its fourth action, it is going to ever so slightly tighten its grip on Drava, and she loses uh, 50 HP from it. And then for its fourth action, I mean for its fifth action, uh, it is going to use Drava as a shield against Mel, since at this point the Berserker has long forgotten that Yashua is in the air and out of sight for it. Yashua, I do believe it is your turn. Yeah, sorry. Um, Alright. <clears throat> so, he's using Drava as a shield. Yeah, he uses Drava as a shield against Mel. So... See, this is what I have in mind. I want to charge Adam. But not attacking, just get behind him. Attempt to break the grip that he has on Drava. Grab him from behind, take off into the air with him, and just drop him in the ocean or in the river. What do I have to roll to do that? And how many actions would that take? Okay, so see as fast like that is gonna take your entire turn. Uh, it's a pretty big dude, so, so to break it, to forcefully break its grip on Drava, and hear me out before you start rolling, mm -hmm. to, to break its grip, you're gonna, I'm gonna have you roll, you say you're behind it, right? Yeah, like I'm flying behind them. Okay, okay. So I can grab him from behind after I break his grip on Drava. Okay, so. To make it lose its grip, I want you to roll Gun Fu one time. Okay. And then. Two. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. That ain't gonna work. No. Well, no, no, no. I'm not saying no to it, it didn't work. Uh, it worked, but it it flinched in a way where it dropped Drava and she landed on her face. But oh. it did, but you did make it let her go. So now to grab it, I need two strength rolls. Oh, that's trying to save this one. Okay. So you grab it by the back of its loin claw. 
and you were you're throwing it in the water, right? I'm throwing it in the river, but like I'm not just gonna drop them. I'm gonna fly as high as I could and fly down with high acceleration and just drop drop them down like a cruise missile. He's not just falling into the water, he's crashing into the water. Okay. Uh roll Roll acrobatics for this. Okay. And now roll a D100 for how much MP you're going to be spending flying up and then down. Okay, uh do one hundred? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you forgot the the one. Mm -hmm. I meant to say roll a one D one hundred. Oh. Uh, Okay, let's see here. Okay, you spent four hundred and eighty two MP doing that. And you said you were, you were like hard chucking this thing into the water, right? Yeah, like terminal velocity, just crashing him into the water. Oh, okay. That's the reason why I'm flying up at full throttle and flying down at full throttle. Letting, letting his mass and gravity do all the hard work for me. I see. Interesting. Well, it very much so crashes into the water. However, the Berserker is not dead, but the Kobold Guard is dead. He took so much damage that the Kobold, Kobold Guard just got... I don't know, he just... Just had a heart attack. Couldn't handle the pain. Yeah, pretty much. So I crash in here, I fly, I literally avoid flashing with him, and I'm just like slowly hovering beside Dreva to make sure she's alright, and that's how I end my turn. Okay. Uh, don't forget to take off the, uh, the MP that you're missing, though. Alright. Uh, hold on. Should we, uh, you use... Uh, 482 of your MP to do that. Okay, give me one second. 482, and that should be at three. 379. It's not editing, why not? Hang on. Okay, there you go. Right. Uh, oh, ice cream, thank you. Who's that? Oh, yeah. uh, poker is restarting the Discord. Can I have no go? Uh, hang on. Alright, so since Poker is restarting her Discord, I'm gonna have Drava go in her place. Uh, she pulls herself off the ground and gets the dirt and whatnot off of her face. Yastra apologizes. I'm so sorry. I meant to help. <laughs> uh, she side eyes you for a hot second, but lets it go. 
uh, with a panic look on his face. Right. Uh, she is going to cast. She's going to cast Eroga on the spear wielding kobold. And she completely uh, obliterated its shield that it had. It, wait. So it took 384 damage, so that shield is gone. So that minus. That's zero. Then Alright, and then for her second action <clears throat> she is going to cast Ruin on it. And it's done and deader than death itself. And then for the goblin that is currently face down on the ground she is going to cast spike on it and take one of its eyeballs and for the weaponless goblin uh, she is going to cast siphon twice so that's so she has regained 300 MP. And then for her last action, uh, she is going to... She's going to turn around and set her sights on the Orc Berserker, and that is her turn. <laughs> and amidst all of what's going on right now, she says aloud to no one in particular that it's been quite a while since she's been ambushed by such pitiful enemies and she is incredibly rusty and needs to get the whole adventuring thing down again as she says getting ambushed by something like this is it shouldn't be happening why did my mana go back up why did it yeah like I was confused it went back up oh. did you do something or no yeah And as Drava is looking at the Orc Berserker, uh, it is in the process of climbing out of the water as it is very, very angry. You see where I'm from? If you try to grab a woman like that, that's a death sentence. Are you saying that to the berserker? Yeah. Uh, in response to what you said, uh, it doesn't much understand you, save for the death sentence part. And... In a fit of rage, it nearly leaps out of the water and onto the shore, glaring like as many daggers as possible at Yashua. And welcome back, um, Boger. It is Mel's turn. I already had Drava act while you were gone. Okay. Let us see. I will use Dragon Ice one more time to get my attack to its max. On. This Mr. Sir in front of me. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Was Polka to see what I did to that berserk? <laughs> Sadie, I don't think so. Uh, you want to give her the rundown while I do the damage calculation? Yeah, basically, that berserker was getting all his hands all over Drago because he was gripping her, right? So I just what the fuck? <laughs> so I I attacked, I shot his hands with gung fu to make him drop Drago, but I got a bad roll, so she landed on her face, and <laughs> um, which Yasuo apologized for. Yasuo grabbed the uh, berserker from the loincloth or whatever and took him to the air in terminal velocity, then dived down with the Berserker in terminal velocity and dropped them in the river, making like a loud crashing sound. And he is pissed at me right now. Holy shit, is he still alive? Yes. He is. Okay, I want to murder him. Because I also had something else in the for right, So the enemy you attacked, Mel, is now at well, no, you dealt 300 damage. It's still standing. Barely, but still standing. Hmm. How... How long is Prism Beam? How long is Prism Beam? Yeah, the range. Uh... Should be like... 15 feet I put down for it, I think. Mm. Okay, I'm, I want to smack this dude one more oh. time before I go and check on the Walter dude. Okay. So basically, like, Dragon Slice should murder him, so I'm not gonna try much. <laughs> Bonk. Bye bye. Hello. So you attack it and then move to a different target? Yes. Okay. It's in the water, right? Uh, hold on. Uh, it is on the shore, but the enemy you attacked is still alive, but it's like a gust of wind can push it over and it'll die. He'll die soon. I don't mind. Okay. She'll lock out. I want to use acrobatics to at least knock him into the water, cast lightning on my sword, and use prism katana. So that way, since my sword has lightning on it, this man's gonna get electrocuted. Okay, so you wanna... Wait, you wanna use acrobatics to push it. You're gonna spell blade yes. lightning, and then you're gonna cast lightning? No, I meant thunder, technically. Same thing. I'm gonna cast... I'm gonna cast... Yes. I wanna cast thunder on my sword to smack him with prism katana. However, if my acrobatics fails. Okay. Uh, that's three actions, so that will be the rest of your turn, but go for it. Yep. Okay, so... I'm assuming you flip into it and use its chest as a springboard, yes? Yes, that is exactly what I wanted to say. Okay. It's like basically oh. me jumping from this dude to the other person, flipping in the air, smacking this man to the ground. Okay. So, you don't knock the berserker on his ass, but you do make it stumble backwards further into the water. Okay. So, it, it its knees are under the water. And then you... Cast Thunder to do that. Okay. And Prism Katana. Okay, so let me do this. Okay, so it took 310 points of damage. And because, because it was in water and therefore wet, <clears throat> uh, it will take bonus damage from the thunder attack. So that's... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. 
this times this. That's another 92 points of damage. All right. Solid. Uh, it is just barely above half health after getting hit by all that. And so, now it is the enemy's turn. So the Berserker is he is very much so electrocuted and it is desperately trying to get out of the water now but because you hit it so hard with your thunder spell uh, its speed has been halved and because of the shock to its system it is very much struggling to move so it is going to spend three actions struggling to get out of the water and it just barely made it onto shore its feet are still submerged but its entire lower half is still wet and it will it attempts to swing at you but the electricity that is still resonating inside of its body prevents that from happening paralysis well it's not not paralysis, paralysis completely because you, it, it didn't have to roll to be afflicted by it because you used thunder one you didn't use thunder three through six true i don't have that yet right um so turning back to the goblin that was on the ground that got its eye pierced by draver's earth spell its accuracy and speed have gone down tremendously as it only has you know half of its vision but nonetheless it runs over to its goblin companion comrade whatever you want to call it and it tries to convince its ally that maybe they should leave because they are in way over their heads. And thus, if any of you would want to interrupt their attempt to flee, I would have you roll Intimidation. If you want to interrupt them fleeing the fight, that is. Yeah, I will. <laughs> All right, so you are. Okay, you're pretty far away from them, so. Okay, go to your ramp your sheet, Mel, and scroll up to the top of it. Will you see advantage, normal, and disadvantage? Click disadvantage and then roll intimidation. Okay. Mm. Okay. So even, so even uh, also uh, click normal again. So even with as far away as you are, you turn to them, and while they aren't looking at you, they can feel your presence, and suddenly they are no longer talking as they are too scared to do so oh. glaring daggers and because you frighten them so much uh the one-eyed goblin turn ends and the one that currently doesn't have a weapon lost its turn and now the party's turn again Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Is 50 feet that doesn't cost an action? Or is it 20? 
if you move more than 15 feet, as long as you're wearing the falcon armor feet parts, that does not cost an action to move. Also, you're still in the air, right? Yep. Okay. Just make it. Sure. I'm in the air, like I'm just hovering like a meter off the ground. Okay. Uh, how much health do these two have? Uh, oh, hold yeah. on. You don't know. I know, but you don't. You mm haven't -hmm. attacked them? No, no, they've, they've, well, the, the caster one hasn't gotten hit, but the one with the club in his hand, yeah, that one's been getting hit. Hmm. But yeah, you, I know how much health it has, y'all don't, because y'all haven't used Libra. Libra. Libra, same thing. Now, let me think. What should I do with you? Alright. I will say, though... I know that one of them had really low HP. Yeah. I think it was the next club that had really low HP. Yeah, it was his asshole with really low HP. Okay. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fly at him and do like a drop kick directly at his face while flying straight at him. I want to use his body to like knock this guy backwards. Oh, it's like like collision cool. damage. Okay. Um for that, I'm gonna have you roll... Hmm. Roll acrobatics. Okay, now roll strength. Why is the strength save? Where is... Okay. People forgetting that this bar is not your comp rolls, it's the, the individual ones. Okay, so you do that. You drop kick the club wooden goblin. Uh, gar goblin. Goblin, yes. And upon contact, you shatter its ribcage and it dies. And it collides with the caster goblin so much so that it bounces off the tree and lands on its face behind you. One action left, right? As I did three rolls. Uh, I'm I'm ignoring the strength save. So you did uh, two actions. You got three left. Since okay. that was a misclick. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Yashua yeah, just, you know, put puts his foot on the goblin's black, uh, sorry, on his back, <laughs> and and just, you know, turns on his uh, thrusters just by burning him slightly. Actually, yeah, I'm going to set him on fire with the thrusters just by stabbing him. Can I do that? Uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna kick up the thrusters that hard, um, that's... Actually, no, that's torturing. I'm not gonna torture him. I'm just gonna finish him up. I'm just gonna shoot him in the back of the head while he's in the ground. Okay. Because I was gonna say, that's gonna be all of your remaining MP. Yeah. I don't want to burn all my MP. Whatever's left of it. Yeah, I feel like just puts his heavy, heavy boot in his back and just takes aim at the back of his head. Just reload and stipends his head. There we go. Okay. Oh, that was kind of cold what I just did. 
Oh, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is indeed dead. You overkilled it by 12 points. Alright. So now we go back to the Berserker and Mel. Salud. Ashura looks at the Berserker. She like does the little splitting throat gesture at the Berserker. Uh, <laughs> Is it possible for me to cast three spells on this man's, but in the process enhance my sword and then prism katana him? So you want you want to cast three different spells, spell blade your weapon, and then it prism. Katana. I want my sword to look like saber from uh, Fate Zero. No. Why? As in the animation, not the, not like a big ass sword. Oh, okay. So, like with the different colors. So I want like as in like glowing with lightning, fire, and ice. Uh, that is a three-way spell blade, and you do not know how to do that yet. Why? Like, when can I learn how to do that? When you get to that point. Okay. How many spell blades do I like? I can I, I can I can only use one. Yeah, currently you can only have one elemental spell active on your weapon with spell blade at a time. Well, it's okay, because thunder is good in the water, so I learned that from Pokemon. Let's see here. I will... The fuck is this? I'm not using it. Oh, it's just made a break, okay. Um... Let's see here. Okay, I will use... Fucking hard, I mean, Jesus. Can I do use double slash to slash to him twice? Uh, double slash hits one target once. There needs to be multiple enemies present for it to be used uh, m multiple times. Prison katana. Why? Sheesh. <laughs> okay. okay. Fuck you, fuck you. Ooh! Eat my yeah. cock! Two crits in a row? God damn. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh. Okay, wow. That was unexpected. Because I was getting ready to say, uh, since you used, uh, a flash freeze and the target was wet, uh, it became cold. However, uh, I don't even need to do the rest of the math because it is dead as hell. And you very much overkilled it by like 300 points. <laughs> wow. Sheesh almighty. Anyway. That's right. We touch our comrades. So, y'all won the fight. And there you go. Wrong song. Everybody can say round two. Because I know that song is one of my favorite battle themes. Where where did I put it? Uh. Oh wait, I know where I put it. Here we go. Gang shit. Okay, so for winning that fight, uh, I'll type it out. I'll type it out, but I'll say it anyway. Uh, Y'all gained 700 exp. Y'all gained. Uh, again, about 30 pieces of wood. You can use that for fire or whatnot. Up. Oh, I didn't mean to hit enter on that. 70 HP, 30 wood. Uh, each of you got 400 gil. And you take the shoulder piece off of the Orc Berserker and 
all of you have a sheet of gold. Mm. Nice. Alright. I don't think any of you leveled up from that, so once you've added your stuff together, we'll keep it going. I I completely lost track of the EXP. I just I I just do levels at this point. Okay. Well I would use ISIS because he keeps track of all that. Uh all of you should have let me make sure this is right before I give you an inaccurate number. Okay, yeah, you're the grand total of EXP that you, all y'all should have should be fifty-eight thousand four hundred and fifty. Fifty-eight thousand four hundred and fifty. Yeah. 50. Do you want to know when I lost track? Yeah, where did you lose track? Sixteen hundred. Damn. Yeah. When I said we leveled up, that's when I ended the level. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I lost track of 28,000. 000. See, I'm not used to doing experience myself. I mean, I'm, I'm used to video games doing it for me. <laughs> yeah, I can't really blame you on that one. <laughs> I'm big and strong and have a beard. I might as well act like big dumb dumb. Alright, we have all this. Is it just that? Uh, 30 wood, 400 gill, and uh, one gold sheet? Yep. Awesome possum. Where's my gill? Ah, uh, there it is. We all good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for me, adding my gill. But yeah, we Gucci. Alright, tight. So, as the bodies of the enemies fade into the ether, y'all regroup and y'all continue about y'all's merry way. That was unexpected. I feel like after the amount of times this has happened, it wasn't that unexpected to me. No, like, I wasn't expecting him to come charging at me like that. I kind of panicked and I flew up. Oh, well, yeah. I'm, that I didn't expect. I'll agree with that one. I'm, I'm not used to personal engagements like that out of nowhere. Dude charged at you like you were Sion from League of Legends. Mm. Yeah. Did you say that part in character? Oh. Because I saw the fucking god of Trevor goes like, bitch the fuck, I'll start crying. She knows too much now. <laughs> she knows too much. She knows too much, she must die. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to replace the League of Legends part with a similar type game that exists in Lufenia. League of Legends. <laughs> or something. Legacy battle. We're gonna we're just gonna call it legacy battle. Legacy battle, yeah. All right. Okay, sure. After that encounter, though, Drava she pats the dirt and whatnot off of her clothes and reaches into her bag and she takes out a can of Barkeep's Rolling Berry Juice. Oh. Huh. Yeah, sometimes uh, the really big dumb ones will run at you like the way that one did. You get used to it after a while. But don't worry, I myself, I'm not really... I'm not built for close combat stuff. Or rather, I could be, but I chose to do a different way. And as Draver mentions, 
not being built for uh, close quarters combat, she makes very obvious and purposeful eye contact with Mel. Oh. <laughs> Hello there. You just smile and wave. Hi. Okay, so as you all begin to leave this area, you come to a fork in the road. Do you want to go north or east? I like the north. No, but the east is Japan. Well, you have said a different I do like Asia. I do like Asia. We don't even have an Asia. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> you do not know that, sir. I swear I'm gonna kill her. Hey, that's your that's your party member. I'm gonna jump her in strawberries. No, no. Violence is not the answer. It's a question, and the answer is yes. Oh well. <laughs> so, which direction are you guys going? I have an idea. The actor picks up a stick and drops it. <laughs> See what it points to? No, I'm kidding. Let's check the map. Do we have a map for this area? Uh, yes, Angela did mark on you all's maps uh, the destination you need to be heading to to meet up with your uh, contact. But whether you go north or east, you will you will still reach that destination. Huh. All right. Uh, which route is shorter and which one's longer? Or there's no straight answer. Mm. So if you all were to proceed directly north from where you all are uh, on the map it looks as if you will be traversing a grassy plain with incredibly tall grass but if you go to the east you will go along a not so much nature loaded path but there is a small establishment appearing to be a tavern Hmm. Let's go east then. Cause tall grass. There could be other creatures hiding in the grass, and maybe something will try to ambush us again. Very true. Okay. So. And who knows? If we're lucky, we may encounter bandits on the east. But I prefer bandits over monsters. Since humans, since since humans make mistakes, they're easier to take out. Okay, well, going along with the consensus choice, you all head east, and about about two and a half hours go by as you all are walking, and checking the time, it's about 8.30, since that fight did take a while. Yeah, sure, it just takes notes of events on his, uh projector on his wrist okay and he and then and then he's just typing stuff down and he's like not to self make a car or any form of transportation <laughs> the on earth there's something called a jeep right where he's from it's gonna kind of called a jupe <laughs> <laughs> okay all right, so you all you all are stepping going along your way, and ahead of you, you all can see a small tavern. It that also appears to double as an inn. Hmm. Well, then, ladies, shall we? We shall. I. Hmm, this place looks familiar. I haven't been to this place, but it does look real close to some of the other ones I've been to. Anyway, let's go on inside. It's starting to get a little late. After you. Alright. 
security of walks in and opens the doors and inside you can see quite a few people uh, some people look way too deep into the alcohol for the time oh. of night that it is uh, you can see some people with several plates of excuse me, finger foods by them you see a white haired man with the crystal ball to your left you see a lady with a hood covering about half of her face on the right and you Sister. see who you assume to be the owner of this establishment at the desk. Or not desk, uh, bar table. Alright. Shall we just, uh, settle in here for the night? And continue our way tomorrow morning? Mm -hmm. Well, we I'm not do. particularly tired. Ooh. But I would like to get something small to eat and do a little bit of exercise while we're here. I'm pretty sure there's an open space in the back where I can do that. All right. What about you, Mel? Um, I think I'm gonna talk to the person at the desk. See if I can also get something to eat because I am famished. All right. All right. So, Mel and Java are going up to the counter. Yes. Yes. All right. So I'm gonna sit Drava there. You can sit Mel wherever you want. And when she takes her seat, the tavern owner takes a glance at her and she says hey there how's it going what can i get you as she slides you to a menu and on it you see <clears throat> oh, excuse me you see a fairy's salad you see a serpent's gizzard and you see something called uh, Rising Souffle. I'll take the serpent's thing. I'm not a, I'm not a sweets person. <laughs> Alright. And you, little lady? She says to Drava. Um, I... I'll I'll take that uh, that fairy salad you have. Sure thing, ladies. Give me just a few moments. Well, you two are in the counter, ordering your food. Yashua is uh, sitting back with his arms folded against the wall back here, and he's just scanning the entire area. Since this is all new to him. Okay. He's also take notice of this individual. Hmm. Hmm. The hooded lady uh, looks at you the exact same time you look at her, and I'm going to ask you to make a charisma save. Oh dear. <laughs> I get worried because I don't know what Riku has in mind or what he's planned so far. It's gonna be a terrible roll. So, uh, that's a hard crit failure. Yep. And upon making eye contact with her, uh, you blush. So much so that you turn the exact same color as the tomatoes that you are carrying. <laughs> Alright. And she ever so gently beckons you to come over and take a seat with her. And oh, fuck. What did I get myself into? You, you consider it. And 
and I'll leave it up to you whether you want to go sit with her or not. Hmm. Yasha yeah, just closes his eyes and thinks for a moment. And then he just shrugs. Sure. When? Okay. So, <clears throat> when you take your seat, the hooded woman says to you, Oh, you don't look like you're from around here. Did you see something you liked? Or is my face covering that off-putting to you? No, not at all. It's just, it's my first time here. So I'm just getting, I was just scanning the area and getting to see what kind of people we have here. First time, huh? Oh, well, if there's only been, uh, you know, just a few thousand times I've heard that. Assuming my gut is right, you no. and the other two ladies you came here with, I'm assuming you're travelers of some sort. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, this seat is really comfy. Ah, uh, hold on a second. Are you guys gonna do anything outside with the drills? No, not here. This one still has to charge you for the, the weed whacker. Oh, no, okay. Are you guys gonna do work outside today? No, no, no. Sorry about that. You good. Alright, uh, she asked, what now, if we were travelers? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, we are. Hmm. Interesting. Well then. I'm sure something caused us to make eye contact at the same time. So, is there anything you'd like to ask me? Or, can I play the question? Well, let's see. I got nothing to ask, so shoot. Hmm. Well, well, well. Allow me to begin with... Are you capable of... Going past your limits? She says that in a very strange smirk creeps upon her face. Why do I feel like this person's dangerous, but yet I'm excited at the same time? Like, I feel like I'm being challenged here. Going past my limits. Yeah, sure, I just shrugs for an answer. Hmm. Okay. Well, before I press on with that, my next question for you is what do you th <clears throat> excuse me, what do you think of this marking? And she pulls her robe sleeve up and rolls it up to about her shoulder and 
you can see very strange tribal like markings starting from her right index finger and borderline covering her entire arm up to her shoulder these these markings are a combination of blue and purple Yashua glances at the markings. He even magnifies his uh, eyesight to take a closer look without, you know, moving up close. I've never seen anything like that before. From, from where do you hail? A peaceful village. She looks... She looks downtrodden for a moment. And a little confused at the same time. But she shrugs it off. And she waves over the tavern owner as... Mel and Draver are both handed their foods, and she says that she'd like to order a few rounds. And she takes a look at the hooded lady, takes a look at Yashua, and she asks lady, uh, is this guy old enough to drink? He doesn't look that old. Yashua just chuckles. <laughs> Water's fine. Okay. She skips off and she comes back with a gargantuan sized mug of water and an equally large mug of beer. As that smirk that the hooded lady has goes into a full blown ear to ear smile. As she suddenly stands to her feet and proclaims, I challenge thee to a drinking contest. Excuse me? Um, I would love to partake, but I'm not drinking alcohol here. That doesn't matter. I just want to see who can get to the bottom of their mug first. I'm choosing that one. Yashua slams down his hands and stands up and says, you're on. Okay. So, how this mini event works is that I'm going to continually have you roll constitution. You need to roll a total of 185 before the hooded lady does. Every time you drink, she'll drink. Every time she drinks, you'll drink, etc., etc. You're taking turns, essentially. God, I feel like this is a mini mini mission for ice, not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So, kick things off for us. Constitution, right? Yep. Where is... Here it is. Alright. So, you start off, and you take a... Not too, take a not too big of a swig, but you take a little sip off of your mug and you realize that this water is incredibly fucking cold and you look at the bottom of it and you can see about half of an ice shard inside of it what what in the stars <laughs> 
like like if if you had to guess uh, the the water feels like someone cast blizzard inside of it just like i'm drinking liquid nitrogen bro god <laughs> Oh, okay, and the Hooded Lady starts off strong, taking a big, oh, mighty yeah, gulp of, of, of her beer. And when she puts her mug down, she wipes off the phone, it wipes off the foam, that's what I meant to say. And she looks at you with an, with an expression that reads, give it your best shot. Uh, was not expecting this. He says that in character. Ooh, okay. All right. So your next gulp is a is a hefty one, as you power through the cold this time. And in response to what you said, the hooded lady says, well, you, as a traveler, you have to be prepared for anything that might happen when you set foot inside of a tavern. And she lifts her mug and prepares to take another gulp. All right. <clears throat> she... Sips it down, little by little, making sure not to down too much, lest she get, you know, wasted. As far as far as you th think she can handle her alcohol. <clears throat> no, I keep I keep stifling uh, baby burps. Ooh, the cold gets the better of you that time, as you don't take as big of a swig in your water. Brain freeze. <laughs> Brain freeze. Why is this so cold? Right. Yeah, so I just like dripping onto his like head because it's cold. Ugh. Oh, what's the matter? Baby can't handle his water. She says, taunting with you. Uh, Mel, if you like to comment on this, you can. I am. Um, Draven are literally sitting at like another uh, at the bar and looking at them going like damn wild. <laughs> It's like both of us are dropping, but not wanting to say anything at the same time. We're kind of like, mm? <laughs> right? You're 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 into it. You're watching what's going down, essentially. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Drava, she she's trying not to laugh while eating her salad at the same time, as this is quite entertaining for her. Of course. Why does the sim shit have to have to do me? <laughs> <laughs> Why does this happen? Uh, right, 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 right. He, he's always vibing. Though he though he can get extremely serious at a flip of a switch. Right. Uh, she the lady takes another um moderately sized gulp of her drink as she continues to tease Joshua Yashua. And for the scoreboard right now, the hooded lady is at 92, Yashua, you are at 68. Yeah, Yashua's not a drinker. <laughs> <laughs> Yasha just looks at the big ass mug like it's a fucking wall. Uh... Takes a sip. All right. He takes another sip once again, uh, powering his way through the cold. Let's return it again. Uh, the, 
lady. This with with this gulp for whatever reason, she suddenly stands to her feet and downs a little bit more of it. As, Damn. As she is, she's feeling really triumphant right now. Like like she is, she she feeling herself essentially. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's just keep on eyeing his big mug like it's some kind of intimidating figure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, for this one, why is it so damn cold? For this one, you too stand to your feet and mimic her triumphant drinking motion as. As the, with the eye contact that the two of you were making, if you uh, both were to cast some form of a lightning spell, they would be colliding right now. Oh my god, we're, we're, we're sparking. Okay. Yep. Alright, and with that sip, uh, she is. She's beginning to feel the alcohol hit her with how fast she's drinking it, and she very intelligently decides to sit down. Yeah, so it just chuckles. Ha ha ha, reaching your limit. Uh, limit? Um, no, no, I'm good. I'm fine. As after she says that, the tavern owner scoffs very loudly. <laughs> My turn. This dies. You can't handle this cold water. Uh, it's like I'm drowning here. He says that in character. It <laughs> feels like you're drowning, alright. Nonsense, my drinking companion. There's no such thing as drowning when you're having a good time with a good drink. Even if it is water. I'm not even a drinker. I know that I don't drink like this. <laughs> I'm saying all this in character too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Uh, she every time you say uh, you're not a drinker, she just laughs more and more. So much so to where like she's getting so loud to where the other uh, patrons in the tavern are looking over at this sudden drinking contest, and half of the crowd is encouraging her, and the other half is encouraging you. Nashua takes some of the drink, but like, he coughs because it's so cold. Alright. Uh, fuck. <clears throat> After she takes, uh, that, that sip she did, she drank it a little too fast. And some of it went down the wrong hole, and she is coughing. She's not choking, but she's coughing from drinking too fast. Yeah, sure, just points and laughs. Uh, so you, you're really, really close to the end of your mug and the ice crystal ever so slightly grazed your tongue but once that happened uh the water is not as cold anymore huh.
Yashko is puzzled for a moment. Oh, she just finishes her mug. No, not yet. Wait. Wait, yeah. Yeah, she does. <laughs> uh, so her mug is empty. She slams it down on the table. She throws her arms up in victory. And then she stumbles backwards into the wall. Oh. Does she... Into the wall? Does she fall on the ground or anything? No, she... She's still standing, but she is very clearly some form of drunk right now. But nonetheless, she congratulates you for your efforts, and as a result of just partaking in this mini game, mini event, whatever you want to call it, uh, increase your constitution by two points. I'm so confused right now. How did I end up like this? <laughs> and for Adreva and Mel, increase your charisma by one. That very salad must have been magical. <laughs> well, yeah, it makes sense that they're getting the charisma up. I mean, two pretty ladies in a tavern. Oh my god, stop it. <laughs> Well, it's that. Yasha just doesn't even bother finishing the mug. He just places it on the table. All right. Uh, so the hooded lady, she pries herself off the wall. And she is making her way towards the stairs. But... She drops a piece of paper by your foot, and before you even have a chance to say, hey, you dropped this, she is already gone and out of sight. You open the piece of paper to reveal that her name is Roselia. Roselia, huh? Six messages. That's all. That's all I get out of the paper, Roselia. Nothing else. Yep. Hmm. I feel like there's something more to her. Well, I'm not gonna worry about it now. Do I really look that young? As he like starts to feel his face. <laughs> uh, the tavern owner, in response to. Uh, hearing you say that, she says that you most certainly do not look old enough to drink. You look like you're about 17. Huh. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. So, once... Once Drava completely finishes her salad, so much so to where the plate is so empty, it looks like she licked it clean. And she pays for her food. By the way, uh, Mel, uh, you lose mm -hmm. 400 gil for your meal. And she turns to Mel, and she says... I want you to teach me something. Mm, what would you like to learn? Uh, any technique you have that would be beneficial for me, I want to learn it. Hmm. But not in here, of course. Uh, Ma'am, she turns to Tavern. Is there uh, any empty spaces in the back that we could use? And she looks and cocks an eyebrow at Drava and Mel, and she says, uh, yeah, just when you get up here, turn around, make a right, go through this door, and then go through the door all the way at the other end of the hall, and you will be in the backyard. 
Lovely. Okay. Well, while you two do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna wreck two rooms. One for you two, and one for me. Okay. Oh, well, so we're sharing the same room. Well, yeah. You're Honestly, that's so cheaper. I share a room, you two. Okay, sounds good. Driva, do you mind sharing a room? Huh? Oh, uh, um, uh, yeah, I, no, I, it, it's okay, that's fine. Yeah, so I just chuckles, alright. Two rooms, please. How much gil is that? That'll be 2,000 gil for the three, you guys. All right. I'll give you all the discount for the little show you just put on there, buddy. Oh, huh, much obliged. Not a problem. As I place 2,000 gil on the counter there. Right. And I'm assuming, Yashua, you're going to retire to your room now? Uh, well, I have nothing else to do, so I better start uh, doing some maintenance as I, uh, you know, point at the revolvers I have on me. Okay. So, now the driver, y'all make y'all way to the backyard. All right. So, so my room's gonna be here. Okay. Are you there? Mm -hmm. okay. So, Drava is formally requesting that you teach her an ability. So, what out of the abilities that you currently know are you going to teach her? She cannot mm -hmm. learn uh, specific weapon-based abilities, so she can only learn uh, abilities you gain normally through leveling up. So she cannot learn Prism Beam, she cannot learn uh, uh, Flash Freeze, of what she can learn that you can teach her. You can teach her Dragon Slice, Serpent Slice, Rapid Slash, Third Eye, Double Slash, or, uh, a blinking cut and a slap shot. Hmm. I don't think about what I wanted to teach her. Okay, I want to teach her a dragon slice. Okay. So let's see. Here. So that'll be so giant class level one ability. So I'll be fifteen D one minus Wait, did I get even one? Minus D one. Okay. So, you spend the next three minutes teaching Drava Dragon Slice. And she practices it a few times just so that she can get the feel of the attack. Now, give me a moment as I punch this in for her. If you want, you can you can act out you teaching it to her. So, Dragon Slice is technically the first move I have ever learned on my journey to becoming a samurai. So, if you grab your blade like this, 
and I try to imitate the same position on my sword. If you hold your blade in this position and slice it in this direction, you'll be able to use dragon slice. It's a very, it's a very basic move. It doesn't take much to learn, but if you don't hit it from this angle, or if you don't hold it in a specific way, you might not be doing as much damage as you want to. So be wary to how you use it. I see. This is a. Uh... This is different as uh you know i'm not really used to the whole melee thing but i'll 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 figure it out oh trust and believe it will be fun like that yes like that oh cool Womp. that was different Mm-hmm. Now, since you're, you, since you're an elementalist, you'll be able to try to incorporate samurai moves with your other class. That way you'll be able to do things beyond the mind's comprehension. And I think that's quite cool. My... class? Oh, yeah. do you Do you mean profession? Yes, your profession. Do they... Do they call things like... Do they call stuff like that classes where you come from? Um, kind of. We, we, we used to call them classes back in our... World. Huh. That's interesting. Uh, uh. Teach me something else. Something else? Um, okay. Well, we can also learn Serpent Slice. Okay. Serpent Slice increases your speed. For some reason, when you use it, you feel like you gain a lot of agility, kind of like you're a snake, slithering through different enemies, slashing them one by one. Now for this move, instead of holding your sword from this direction, it's kind of sideways as you want to move your body in the way your sword is moving. Specifically like you are like a snake, your movement is very... very like it goes with the flow, in a, in a sense like very snake-like, very water-like. You kind of want to be one with your swords. One with my... Hmm. I don't think I've ever heard that one before. I've heard... Um, one with my magic, but not one with the sword. Man, it's a good now, thing my staff has a bladed bottom side. True. Hmm. I, uh... Gosh, this is so strange. Would you like me to... Here, think about it this way. When you say that you're one with your magic, your magic travels away from you. You feel the energy from your magic reaching the enemy before it impacts them, right? But... When you're one with your weapon, you're a bit closer to it. Instead of seeing your magic go away from you your magic is staying with you kind of like it's part of you it's stuck to your body it's kind of like you're using your body as a weapon but instead it's an extended form which is basically just your sword when you're putting power into your body you feel your sword and being empowered at the same time to be one with your sword is technically like seeing your sword as an extension to who you are makes a lot of sense actually when you put it like that huh interesting i i think i got it now like this right 
Yes, exactly like that. Monk. Yours looks so much more violent than mine. It takes a bit of practice. Right. Yasha is observing from the window while he's polishing his weapons. <laughs> As all things do take practice. Well, that... As Drava stops herself mid sentence she st staggers in place for a bit as she is she she is pushing herself to adjust to a new style of combat, and you can see it starting to take your toll on her. Hmm. Drava, don't push yourself too much. Learning a lot of. Learning a new style of battle will hinder your abilities for a bit, so take it easy on yourself. We can do it like one move per lesson. Especially since the moves that I'm going to teach you later will be a lot more complex than what I'm teaching you now. And when you, yeah. you mentioned how much more complex things are going to get, uh, she very obviously starts sweating from her forehead. Oh, it, that sounds like when I was in magic school. Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't worry about it too much. The difference is that I understand your abilities and how you work. So instead of it being in a magic school with a lot of different people, it will be very upfront and personal. AKA, you will learn a lot more. It's a bit easier for you to concentrate since you also know your teacher very well. Right. Right. Well, okay. She finally pays attention to her surroundings and it is it's kind of dark outside. And as you spent the time teaching her, it's been about four or so hours. So it's a little bit past midnight. And she stretches, and she says to herself, Huh, well, the time sure does go by fast, huh? I, uh, she starts acting a little different. I'm gonna soak in the night sky a little bit. You go on and go hop in bed. I'll be there in a second. Everything okay? Uh I'm um Yeah, I'm 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 fine. I uh, I'm okay. <laughs> Can I roll inside? <laughs> uh Yeah. Oh, my bad. Don't ignore that. <laughs> Um, where is insight? So, looking at her, you can tell that something isn't okay with her. As you you approach her, and she turns away from you. Mm. I. Yeah, are you sure everything is okay? I'll, I'll be f fine. Uh, nothing, nothing to worry about here. Don't gotta worry about one with me. As she begins, she clasps her hands together, and she turns away from you again. Hmm. I am nothing wrong with me. Giver, you're saying that a bit too many times that I feel like there is genuinely something wrong with you. Um <laughs> Roll 
<laughs> Roll intimidation and persuasion. Well then. <laughs> you want an answer? <laughs> Okay. Um you you have to promise not to say anything or freak out. Okay? Okay. I promise. Okay. Yeah, I should be sleeping at this point. Okay. I I figured you'd have been sleeping at this point. Um so, Drava turns around to face you. She pulls her hands apart, and you can see that her nails have grown, her eyes are glowing, and she grins ever so slightly, and you can see something wildly different with her teeth. Oh, that's so fucking cool. <laughs> you said that you character? character? Yes. Wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. okay. Um. So. Not yet. Okay. She. She looks at everything but you, and she's trying to avoid making eye contact. And she states that. Well, as you've been able to figure out i'm not entirely human because you know what human has small horns coming from the front of their heads and what human has red eyes and um while i was with my old traveling group i went into a bookstore by myself one time because I we had been at this place for quite a while and I wanted something else to read and it was this black and red tome that the shop owner advised me not to purchase but me being the rebellious and cocky woman I was back then I ignored them and when I finished reading it I wound up reading a curse and I became half vampire and um <laughs> Every every couple moons or so, I I have you know I have to do vampire things and I I deal with it in the way that you aren't gonna like. As she she pulls her sleeve up to her forearm and you can see several small bite marks on it. Uh, she, she bites, bites herself. Mm -hmm. She drinks her own blood. I don't want to do the whole vampire thing on other people and you know, regardless of where you come from, this is seen as a form of self-harm, and well, you know, nobody likes that. And I, um, I tend to keep that a secret, and uh, that's why when Yashua got us our rooms, I kind of freaked out. Because, well, tonight was one of those nights and I didn't want to, you know. Mm 
you aren't this isn't cumbersome to the group, is it? <laughs> God. Uh she's still not looking at me. Yeah, she she's doing everything she can to not look at you. Okay, Riku, permission to like because I wanna like and I wanna like what's it called? Examine her hands at least. You wanna look at her hands? Fangs. Oh fangs. Um Hmm. Roll investigation. Alright. So you against your better judgment after le learning what you just learned and against her will you straight up walk up to her open her mouth and you get to looking at her fangs <laughs> my character's a fucking nuisance my god so bold my character's so fucking god um Well, okay, I guess I'm <laughs> I guess I'm doing it. Okay. So I examine her fangs and run my my thumb on like the sharp part of her teeth. Mm -hmm. And afterwards I I grab her arm and look at where she bites herself. And then I look at her and I ask why. Um well I I don't wanna fight other people because I don't know if I'm the kind of vampire where if I bite someone they too turn into one or something really really bad happens to them or Riku huh? permission to use my sword to cut a tiny bit of blood out of myself can I do that can I give her my blood uh, I was gonna get to that eventually, but yeah, go ahead. Alright, bet. <laughs> Just cuts your own wrist. Here, have a drink. So I, I, I stop her halfway through and unseize my sword just to cut my arm. Well, not my arm off, but like a... a... Oh! You're grazing your hand, essentially. Yeah. My, my, the, the, my, the palm of my hand. I graze the palm of my hand until I see blood dripping from it. Do I have a container, or do I just like put it in her mouth, like? Um. Well, your hand is bleeding, and she looks at you, and she starts to yell, but realizes where she is, and she's like, "What are you doing? Why did you do that?" I can. And then I'm like, I, I look at her. I'm like, "This way, you won't need to bite me in order to get some blood." I give her the palm of my hand. Obviously, like with blood, like kind of over, overflowing. It's, you're not bleeding that bad. Come on. No, listen. When you cut like the palm of your hand, it's because of the veins that exist over there. It does bleed excessively. It bleeds a lot. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know, but you know, wording is important here. Not over, like over, overflowing technically, because like your palm doesn't actually hold a lot of water on it technically, or water at all, I guess. Moving on. Uh, she looks at you, she looks at your hand, she looks back to you, and then before you can even say anything, uh, she starts drinking up from your hand, almost like, uh, uh, almost like she's drinking water out of a water bottle after a really hot day. Oh, fuck. Damn. That better not make you any week. After about He's weak ten, on after about ten or so seconds of that, she she stops and her breathing returns to normal. Her eyes stop glowing, her fangs retract, and you look at your hand, and the wound you inflicted on yourself is completely sealed, and you have stopped bleeding. Oh. Huh. And Drava. She she turns away from you to wipe her mouth with her hand and 
get any remnants off of her fingers. And you show her your hand, and she is incredibly confused. And then she completely stops in her tracks and she starts to think. That's... No. There's no way that... Could it? I didn't know vampires worked like that. Or maybe I'm special. She is very obviously talking out loud to herself. You can hear her saying this, these things. <laughs> maybe you are. Hmm. Um. As a test, uh, do what you just did again, but on your other hand. Okay. I caught my other hand and place it against her mouth. And she repeats the same action. And when she pulls away, uh, she, you and her both watch the wound on your hand close up instantly. What does this mean? I... Hmm. I look at my hand. I'm not sure, but it seems like you heal people with your mouth. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, Mel, don't ever say that to me again, because that's so gross. That would be hilarious if you just kiss and just heal. God, that's... Oh, you make my skin crawl when you said that. Okay, but why though? But I can't deny it. I... I don't want to put my mouth I'm on- I'm serious! Uh -huh. I'm not telling you to put your mouth on people, woman. But I'm just telling you it's a possibility. I mean, we can't oh, deny God. that, but... I don't want to put my mouth on every and any person's gushing, gaping, delectable, uh, um... Girl? Uh, uh, blood wound. Girl. You didn't hear that. <laughs> I did. I did not hear that. I did. We're gonna act like I never said that. I can do that one. <laughs> okay. I swear if you bring that up, I will cut you. My lips are sealed. And they better be. Anyway, um I I think it time for us to properly wind down and go to bed or something. Mm. And okay, then let's go. Okay. Also, Dreva. Huh? What? You should never see yourself as anything other than what you want to see yourself as. Just because you're part vampire doesn't mean you're less human. Just because you're part human doesn't mean you're less a vampire. What I'm trying to say is that we accept you for who you are, and this won't hinder anything between our relationship or your relationship with the group. Now stop beating yourself up for this bullshit. You can see a very small tear form on Dreva's left eye as she very quickly wipes it off and nods in response. And you two are, have now made it to your bed, uh, your rooms. What did she do at the end? I didn't hear. Oh, she... She started to tear up, but she wiped it away and skipped off to y'all's room for the night. <laughs> Gonna say something funny in the morning. Oh god. He knows too much. So, you all sleep for the night. You fully recover everything 
all your HP, all your MP is back at max. And upon upon waking up and taking care of your morning routine, shower, getting your hygiene and all that in order, y'all meet in the hallway and exchange good mornings and Driva begins to discuss the travel plans for the day. However, she, Yashua just yawns, just said, mentions that strange dream that he had. Oh, what did you dream about, Yashua? Vampires and werewolves. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, I think it was pretty cool. As you say that, uh, before you completely leave the hallway, uh, a strange smoke begins coming out of Mel to Yashua's chests, and it forms behind Dreva, and suddenly, Garland is behind you. Uh, what? And with that, the session will come to an end for today. Why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs>